Finally, let's apply Stokes' theorem to Ampere-Maxwell. So the left side of Ampere-Maxwell was that we took this integral um, around uh, a line integral of v dot dl around a closed loop. Well, if we think back to Stokes' theorem and the curl, what that means is we were evaluating whether this B field has curl. Right? If the B field has curl, it'll have this net sort of effect of making something twist. So we know then we can replace this with the integral of how much of that curl did it have of a surface integral of del cross B. So thinking about it this way made a little bit more sense for the electric field, because we really thought of the curled E field as an EMF pushing something around. Here, it's not quite as direct, but we're thinking about a B field going around a loop when we do Ampere's law. So integral of del cross B dA. And then we can just keep the right-hand side of the Ampere-Maxwell law. It was uh, mu naught times the integral also over a surface. And we had the, um, the normal current, which we described with the current density, um, J. Plus, we had Maxwell's displacement term, D dt epsilon naught E. DA. And it's a standard trick. We look at the thing inside the integral. It must be the same because they're both surface integrals over the same surface, and they're both dotted with DA. Well, now they are like that. So then we get the differential form of the Ampere-Maxwell equation is a del cross B equals, let's see, I'll rearrange it a little bit, mu naught, mu naught J. Uh, plus mu naught epsilon naught d e d t. So there it is, the differential form. Whereas that's the integral form of uh, the Ampere Maxwell equation. And actually, now that we have that, we can go through and put them all together. In a special case, we now have Maxwell's equations. But I want to do a special case. We're ready to think about waves. We're going to work our way towards waves. And we want to do an empty space just to simplify things. We don't want to already start thinking about waves in the presence of a bunch of charge and material and currents. So let's do empty space, meaning no charges and no currents. No currents in the sense of I. Okay, you could have a displacement current, maybe. So if we uh, do that, then what do we have? Del dot E, in this case, equals 0. And you know it equals rho over epsilon naught, but I said no charges. So if that's 0, then no charges. And we have del dot B is always 0. So no one has found a monopole yet, despite what you might read. We have del cross E equals minus uh, D B dt. And then finally, our new one from Ampere Maxwell, we have del cross B equals mu naught epsilon naught dE dt. So you can see they're highly symmetric. These two are 0, and the cross and the time derivative are, are always together between B and E and E and B. And for some of them, we really thought about intuitively how they matched what we know about these laws. Some of them we didn't spend quite that much time. But hopefully you're getting a feel for the difference between the integral form and the differential form. So now let's see if we can use them to get somewhere with a wave equation. <laughs>